which quarterbacks have the most to prove in 2024. And the list, I think, is pretty stacked because one of the things I like about name, image, and likeness is guys are incentivized to stay in school because school is paying them to stay in school. So we're going to go through this list. It's not numbered on your screen, but numbered for me. So number five, I got Cam Ward at Miami. It's his third school. He has never won a conference title. And he chose to return to college football after initially saying that he was going to enter the NFL draft out of Washington State. Then he looked around and saw a loaded QB class like the rest of us said, you know what? How much y'all want to pay me to stay here? Ends up in Miami. Now, I think that Cam Ward was the most talented dude to enter his name into the transfer portal at the quarterback position. We know that he's capable of slinging it. We know that he is capable of making plays. We also know that he will put the ball on the floor a little more than I would like, right? But it's a guy that grew up in Texas that went up to Pullman, made it happen, and is going down to Miami for what will probably be his last season of college football as a grad transfer, I might add, right? I think that this is a man that needs to win at a high level to boost his NFL draft stock into the first round because that was my question. Is that a first-round quarterback? Not for me. Right. But he can be take better care of the football, put up the kind of numbers that we're used to seeing you put up. Right. When hurt nobody's feelings for you to put up those numbers, you had an incarnate word. You know what I'm saying? Lead Miami to an ACC title game appearance, play a New Year's Six Bowl, and then we'll see. Right. I think that's what he has to prove. Number four on the list, I got DJ Ui Ungalale, who has since transferred to Florida State. It is also his third school. And he hasn't led a team to a conference title as the starter. DJ Uyunglele was coming out of high school with the same hype that accompanied Bryce Young. One of those guys won the Heisman Trophy and had just finished his rookie season in the NFL. The other guy chose to leave Clemson for Oregon State and then Oregon State for Florida State. I also think that he's going to Florida State because he wants to show he is the guy that we thought he was in 2020 when he was able to bring Clemson from 18 back to beat Boston College, right? When he's putting on really great displays against Notre Dame. He's got everything you want from an athletic standpoint. I mean, he's, he still throws a 95-mile-an-hour baseball, and I would love to see that dude pitch. But at Florida State, Mike Norvell is looking around going, okay, we went undefeated. And the reason that they left us out of the college football playoff is because my quarterback got hurt. Okay. If I have another talented quarterback who does not get hurt, you could put up the same sort of numbers as Jordan Travis, what will they do with us then? I think DJ Uyunglele would like to see the answer to that question too because he wants to prove that he can lead a team at a major college football program to a conference title, if not to the college football playoff, if for no other reason but to vindicate his talent. I think that is in the offing for him at Florida State. Next on the list, I got Dylan Gabriel, who has, again, on his third school, right? Central Florida, Oklahoma, and now Oregon. And he hasn't won a conference title, which I know you're shocked to hear, right? Because you're looking at Central Florida, no, that he wasn't to do, right? Oklahoma, no, it didn't happen for 6 and 17. And it didn't happen last year because Kansas happened. First loss to Kansas, 1998. Okay. All right. Lo- go into Bedlam. Go into Bedlam. Nope, nope, can't get it done there either. So he's transferring. And I was thinking, all right, you're going up there with Dante Moore. But I think we all believe that, yeah, Dylan Gable is probably going to beat out Dante Moore for the job. But you are inheriting a really great program. Bo Nix did everything he could with that team, right? Nobody looked at Bo Nix last year and said he's the guy that's holding back Oregon. That is the standard. You have to demonstrate that you are at least as good as Bo Nix was in his last year at Oregon, which is very, very good, right? That Bo Nix is, I think, a fringe first-round quarterback, but you kind of got to talk yourself into it the way that you got to talk yourself into Jaden Daniels. And I think that's where Dale, Dylan Gabriel also peaks. I don't think that a Heisman Trophy winning season is going to change your opinion overall of Dylan Gabriel, but it could ensure that he is drafted in the middle of the first round versus, say, the top of the second round. And at Oregon where he wanted to go, where he wanted to wear Marcus Mariota's number, they're going to expect you to vindicate that number, which means you need to put up some Heisman-level stats and need to lead Oregon to what we think is an appearance 
in the Big Ten title game, if not win a conference title. And then next on the list, we finally get to somebody who has demonstrated they can win a championship in quarterback Will Howard, who chose to leave Kansas State, transfer to Ohio State. And I think the read on Will Howard is kind of wrong because that's a big man. That's six foot four, two forty, right? Damn near Cam Newton. But more than that, came off the bench in 2022 and led Kansas State to a Big 12 title against the undefeated Texas Christian Horn Frogs, who ended up beating Michigan in the Fiesta Bowl and then finishing runner up in the national title game. Now, there was a chasm between Texas Christian and Georgia, right? We get that. But again, Texas Christian beat Michigan. Michigan won the national championship just last year. I think Will Howard is trying to show NFL teams that he is a first-round quarterback. I think right now, from an athletic standpoint, you could see it getting there, right? I could I could see that guy turning into the kind of dude that we talk about, like, say, Josh Allen. I think his ceiling is a little bit higher than Dylan Gabriel's, but at a place like Ohio State, you're going to have to do this right now, right? They're not going to wait for you. And there are guys in that quarterback room who I think – could be more talented than he is, but he is the most experienced guy in that room. I think he wants to prove that if you give him the kind of roster that Ohio State has, he can help lead them to the college football playoff and lead them past Michigan for the first time since 2019. And that would go a long way, not just at Ohio State and college football, but in the NFL, right? Because there are lots of folks that watch Ohio State to find out Who's going to get drafted and where? And if you're the guy at quarterback making all those decisions, you're going to get the benefit of that doubt. All right. The next quarterback on this list, the last one we got to talk about, is Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers, who won a conference title, kept Arch Manning on the bench, and forced Malik Murphy to initiate his transfer in the middle of college football playoff preparation. That is how little Malik Murphy thought he was going to have a shot to win this job in the spring. So it is very much Quinn Ewers' job. We're also talking about one of the most talented football players in recruiting rankings history. Okay? We're talking about six dudes by the time he got there had a perfect 1.00 rating across the composite. That was including ESPN, 247, and Rivals. Right? Everybody knew the dude coming out of South Lake Carroll could sling it. Then he goes to Ohio State. Right? Graduates early. It doesn't work out. He transfers to Texas. The first year doesn't go great because it's also his true freshman year, if we're being honest. And then last year, you got to see him grow up. And you got to see what it looks like when Quinn Ewers is slinging it. Can he stay healthy? That's number one, right? And then, if he can stay healthy, can he lead Texas back to the college football playoff and perhaps to a national championship? It is a dude that really should have been at Texas the whole time. And I think even he would say that now. But it is also a man that wants to do what Colt McCoy could not win the national championship, beat the best team in the SEC to do it. He has everything to prove because there are some folks that still don't think that he's one of the better quarterbacks eligible for the 2025 draft, right? It's a little too erratic on his behalf, but you can see the arm talent is there. You can see the accuracy is there. If he is getting that PhD in quarterbacking that he claims to be getting from Steve Sarkeesian, I expect that to show up in 2024, and I think he has to go and prove that. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.